is lower back pain. I mean, I've got Crohn's disease. I know that we can get that stronger. And hold. No, okay. Yourself. And hold. Whoa. Spleen. <laughs> I was just bent over with pain in my stomach, completely fatigued. I was getting some chest pains. Gosh, you poor thing. The part of your bowel responsible for receiving your vitamins. and It's a strong muscle, but it's yeah. too tight at the moment. Okay. So I'm trying to bring in some movement and softness, yeah. get the spine okay. waving. Lovely, good. So I'm using the leg as a lever actually to work on the pelvis. And let go, let go. Heavy, 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 heavy. Yes, brilliant. Yeah, some relief already. So I'm just going to plonk myself on this end. So thank you very much for booking in. That's okay. And uh, as I say, most of the family have been to me already. Yeah, you've had Joe, you've had Abby. Yeah. yeah. So what's the main reason you're here today, Andy? Is lower back pain. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be uh, at its worst, um, first getting out of bed in the morning, so obviously when I've been sedentary, um, and then after any kind of physical activity, like I was washing cars at the weekend, so bending down or crouching down to clean the wheels or underneath the sills and things like that, so I'm crouched down on my knees and things like that. Mm -hmm. As soon as I get back up again, it's, you know, I'm just very tight across here. Yeah. So I sort of, you know, sort of start here as, yeah. I, as I'm getting back up, I sort of start here and then it's sort of slowly sort of bringing it until I can get back oh, to that kind of position, basically. Tight. So yeah, it just gets really, just this sort of, I'll probably say this section here. Sacrum and a bit higher, up yeah. to the waist. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I do get, I mean, I've got Crohn's disease, so I do get um, a lot of bloating and that sort of thing. So whether that kind of, you know, there's pressure in the sort of the lower abdomen and things like that, whether that's sort of I see that quite it a lot. Well. Mm. Um, so yeah, so, I mean, I had it on and off for, for quite a while now and Joe's been saying, oh, you must go and see Victoria. And I said, I will. And then it's just, just got to a point, I've just got to get it dealt with. Okay, okay. Um, um, I'm very hopeful. So I see this kind of condition quite a lot. And you're right, there is definitely a connection with um, an upset digestive system and the lower back. Mm -hmm. It's normally this right part of the digestion on this side, there's right. a valve there that my viewers will have heard me talk about many times, mm -hmm. the ileocecal valve, and that can cause switching between diarrhea and constipation and also gas, mm -hmm. wind and, and pain yeah, movements. Right. So um, yeah, the core therapy will pick that up straight away if that is causing it or or it might not be, it might just okay. be localised to the back. But the Tweenar, which is a treatment I give as part of the actual treatment part of core, which is like a rocking Chinese massage, okay. is the most freeing, softening, loosening type of technique for the lower back. It, it will just feel right. Perfect. Yeah. Good. So let's get you on the couch and okay. see what the kinesiology brings up. Okay. Have a lie down. Okay, so um, have you had kinesiology before? Do you know what uh, it is? No? Yeah, Lovely. Right. I like a clean sheet of paper. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so kinesiology is muscle testing and I'm going to be talking to your subconscious to find out what's going wrong in the body and what are some of the foundational issues that are causing other problems. Okay. So can you raise an arm for me? I'm going to push here. You're going to hold up, stop me pushing okay. and hold. Okay, lovely. So you're getting a feel for how much pressure I'm applying mm -hmm. and hold. Okay, so a little bit of movement there. Do you want to, you're nice and tall, aren't you? Can you go a little bit higher up the couch so your heels are on if possible? Oh. Are they, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that a bit yeah. more comfortable? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Can you raise a leg, a whole leg for me? I'm going to push here. You're going to hold up nice and strong and hold. 
So I don't know if you can feel that, before, but before I applied any pressure at all, you've got a little bit of shake in your leg. Okay. Yeah, you might see it with this one maybe. So uh, leg up for me. Sorry, head down. By see, I mean feel. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to push here. You're going to hold up and hold. Okay. So yeah. there's quite a lot of movement there, isn't there? But I know that we can get that stronger. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so arm and leg together. Yeah, lovely. I'm going to push with both. You're going to hold up nice and strong and hold. Okay, so there's a little bit of movement there. I just want you like steel, steel. rock solid. Okay. Yeah. Same this side, lovely, and hold. Okay, yeah, so same that side. So I'm gonna pull your hair. That's gonna tell me if you're dehydrated. And arm and leg again, this side. And hold. No, okay. So if you were dehydrated, you would have gone strong then. Okay. Yeah, but you didn't. didn't. So you're not dehydrated. Have you had water today? Uh, I've just written in a broker drink. Oh, so okay. Like vitamin drink, yeah. Okay, like vitamin drink. Yeah. Yeah. So I know this is going to be, feel strange, but can you upturn your finger from your left hand and put it into your mouth and touch the roof of your mouth like the back of the dome, but not the sicky place? Uh huh. Yeah. And then can you give me arm and leg again? I'm going to push, you're going to hold up nice and strong and hold. So mm -hmm. different that mm -hmm. you can release. So what we're doing is you're testing various parts of your body and I'm seeing if they go strong when you're anchoring a place. Okay. So you are anchoring something called your SBS, which is a sphenobacillar synchondrosis. It's a little joint. Uh, a junction in the head at the very top of the neck and it's above the mouth so where just near where you were touching and above it is the pituitary gland so if the SBS is out of alignment it could just be twisted or or knocked to one side then all the cranial bones will be because it's a, a keystone to all the cranial bones and of course that is going to have lots of offshoots into the body it could be lower back even and it could definitely be digestive system okay. so um, there are like four foundational things that we check in core the SBS is one of them and okay. it's it's flagged straight away okay. um, I'd say maybe five to ten percent of people if they haven't had core before will fail their SBS so not too many okay. but if they do fail it, it's a significant thing that we need to correct right. and you will feel so much better afterwards. Great. So if you don't mind, I'm going to put a glove on and touch where you were just touching in your mouth. That's Is that fine. okay? Yeah. I'm glad you've got an open mind. No, that's the best way to be. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so I'm just putting a glove on. Lovely. And relax your jaw and breathe. So it's bizarrely quite a relaxing feeling having mm. this floated. And if you were to close your eyes, you may well see some beautiful colors behind your closed eyelids. So it might feel like a long time, but I'm gonna be here a minute mm. or two. So it's not too long, but it might feel long. If you want me to take my hand away, just make a sound. Mm -hmm. And breathe. Wow. 
That's a lot better. I don't know if you could feel that, but it just felt like mm. it relaxed. Mm. I could definitely see the colours. Oh, could you? Mm -hmm. Lovely. Any particular colours? Um, deep oranges and Ooh. mauves and purples, that sort of thing. Nice. Mm. Right, let's go back to this test. So arm up and leg up together. I'm going to push, you're going to hold up and hold. Okay, still going down. Relaxing that side and hold. Okay, still going down. So, just I need just need to check that the SBS is better. Can you touch with the same finger that place in your mouth? Just want to hold these and hold. So much better. I'm wondering if I wasn't there long enough because you're so much better when you when you support it. So, support it. Okay. so do you mind me just no. going back, no, no, just fine. getting a new glove out? I did feel it improving, but maybe it, there was more improvement to be had. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's try again, arm and leg together, and hold. Wow, mm -hmm. can you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and hold. Okay, so it's going down a tiny little jot that side, so I'm just going to have a little, so that's a different issue, now it's only one-sided, it won't be the SBS. So relax, 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 hold body weight, just relax, that's it. Just gonna have a feel around your lower back. So I think we've got a mm. sacroiliac separation there. Is that sore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to push with those two again, arm and leg, and hold. Oh, it's still going down. I've got slightly wrong place, let go. Oh, relax, relax. I'm wondering if it's higher or lower. So I'm gonna start higher up, top of the sacrum. How's it feeling there? Mm, that's, that's, yeah, there's pain there. Yeah. Okay, arm and leg again. And hold. No, still going down. So I'm wondering if it's lower more towards the coccyx. Relax. And again, arm and leg. And hold. No, still going down. Okay. I will persevere. <laughs> relax, relax. So I'm going to put 10 fingers in a whole line along the edge of your sacrum. And again, arm and leg, mm -hmm. and hold. We're getting there, mm -hmm. okay. So I will definitely be working on that area. I'm just updating my notes. Okay. Okay, so um, before I move on to a contralateral test, I'm just going to have a look at your posture. How tall are you? Uh, just, just over six foot. Okay. Do 
you find yourself rounding your back? Do you feel that your posture's yeah, rounded I, I have a with your height? Terrible um, top and my back posture yeah. is, is yeah. Because mm -hmm. that will be affecting your lower back, but you know that, don't you? Yes. Mm. Okay, I think your hips dropped on one side because your leg is longer on your left mm -hmm. and that was the side that we had the sacroiliac separation. Um, it's not ne actually longer, it's just that the hip has dropped on that side. So I'm just going to do some tests to check that. Um, actually, before we start, because um, I'm looking for a strong indicator muscle and I haven't found one yet. So can you bend your elbow? And can you put little finger to thumb? Perfect. I'm going to try and pull them apart. Don't let me. I want you to hold them together nice and tight and hold. Good. Really good. Okay. There was okay. a bit of a, sh just in this one, mm -hmm. there was a bit of a shift in the thumb, but I we'll compare it to that. You can relax that one. Mm -hmm. So that arm oh, can go down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to feel the hips. Oh, pain there. Mm -hmm. um, um, Finger and thumb together again, nice and tight, and hold. Okay, so they're opening. So that was your left hip, and again, and hold. Ah, right is staying pretty much together. And again, and hold. Lovely, okay. Just seeing if they're twisted, and hold. Oh, wow, definitely mm -hmm. twisted that way. Mm -hmm. So that's this one. Uh, interesting. I thought it had dropped on that side, but your body's telling me it's dropped on the other. Mm. Interesting. And one last time and hold. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Mm. So you can relax your hand. So that's whether the pelvis is open. No wonder you're in so much pain. Oh, okay. So can you put two fingers from your left hand on your pubis symphysis, which is the hard bone dead center quite low down in your pelvis? There's a hard bone there. Yeah. yeah, pubis symphysis. So this one again, little finger to thumb. I'm going to try and pull them apart. You hold together and hold. Hey, okay. So that's, that's good. So there is some separation there in your pelvis, but it's not as bad as opening the pubis okay. symphysis. Thank goodness. Okay, you can release your hands. Thank you. Um, let's do a lat dorsi test. So the lat dorsi is the big muscle that wraps around the lower and middle back. Okay. And I want to see what sort of state that's in. So I'm going to pull your arm towards me. You're going to tuck your arm into your body. Keep it tucked in. Don't okay. let me pull. And, okay. and hold. Okay, so not great. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull. You're going to tuck in and hold. Okay, little bit of movement. I need it to be absolutely rock, rock solid. solid. So relax, 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 relax your arms. I'm just going to have a little feel of your, ooh. Okay, there it is. So that's your T5, T6 on your side that failed the worst. And when we fail a lat dorsi test, it's because of this little area there. Oh, is that sore? That is sore, yes. Yeah, okay. So it's about thoracic 5-6. I'm just going to feel your left side. Is it worse on your right? Uh, <laughs> about the same. About the same. Oh, okay. So, yeah, about okay. the same. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> then I'm going to just check your neck out by taking your leg out to the side, it's coming out, and then it's coming up, 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 up. I'm going to try pushing to the floor, you're going to hold up, don't let me push it down. Okay. Okay, and hold. Okay, <laughs> so you were strong, but there was quite a lot of strain there. Yes. The rest of the body was trying to uh, help you out. Okay, relax, relax, coming up. I'm going to push down, you're going to hold up, and hold. Okay, oh. so absolutely no strength there. No. So that is because of C1 in your neck. So I presume these are quite sore here, mm. especially when they come out. About there is quite sore, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. So can you touch there for me? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this one again and see if it's any different now you're supporting the neck. So we're coming out and up. I'm going to push down, you're going to hold up and hold. Okay, mm. so still quite a strain, but you could support it much better yeah. than a moment ago. Okay. You can release your neck. So all what I'm doing now is continuing that conversation with your subconscious and I'm saying to it, is this the problem? Is this the problem? Is this the problem? Sometimes it says yes, sometimes it says no. But you don't need to remember all of this. But so long as your subconscious is making you like a shopping list of issues, and then that shopping list will go into the treatment part of core therapy and get them sorted. Cool. And then we retest anything that failed. So that's why I'm making notes so that at the end we just retest the fails. Not interested in the passes because they're sorted. Okay. Good. Right, I want to check the tummy. Is it all right to have a look at your yeah, tummy? That's fine. Yeah. Have you just had lunch? Uh, yeah, I just had a very quick sandwich about. Um, Maybe about quarter to one. An hour ago. Mm -hmm. So is that a bit sore there? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. It feels a bit hard there. So can you put two fingers where my two fingers are into your tummy? You all right? Mm -hmm. uh, bend your elbow mm -hmm. and give me that little finger and thumb again. I'm going to try and pull apart. You're going to hold together and hold. Oh, interesting. You passed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's good. Yeah. But I didn't expect you to because it was so sore. It is sore. So, I think we're going to test a few other things okay. in your tummy. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I need your help. So, can I have your whole flat hand there? Yeah. Can you give me a little finger and thumb again and hold? Yay! Great. So, keep your hand there. I'm going to keep coming back to it. You can relax it. Okay but um, only, only hold when I ask yeah. you to. Yeah. Right, ends of fingers with this hand, ends of fingers, there. Not pointy fingers and like flat fingers. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. perfect. And hold, oh, gallbladder, okay. Now pointy fingers, okay. in there, and hold. Mm. Okay, bit of stress. Mm. That's your anxiety point. So ends of fingers, flat fingers again. Hey, perfect. And hold. Oh, okay, stomach. Um, right, with this finger, I want you to come under your rib like that. So the whole length of the hand is going, that's it, perfect. Is that sore? Okay, sore. And hold. Whoa. Spleen. <laughs> okay, relax. Mm. I'm putting you through the mill, aren't I? Well, People watch you and be saying, what are you, what are you doing to him? <laughs> oh, well, it's good for viewings. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, two fingers into there, just two. How does that place feel? That's not as sore as up here. That was the worst? Yeah, up here was the worst. Interesting. Yeah. So we're now doing this place and hold. Wee, okay. Mm, okay. Two fingers again deeply into there. That's painful. And hold, yeah. Have you noticed every time it's painful? Apart from one, you, your fingers have tended to... You feel my heartbeat oh. there as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can relax. Yeah. Relax your hand down. I'm just going to test two more. So hand off your hip. And hold, way kidneys. <sighs> Last one, and hold. Okay, I think we're doing an abdominal massage. Okay. <laughs> so I know you've come in for lower back ache, but we're going to start here. Check out your ab abdominals to see what they're telling us, um, and we 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 will retest them straight after the abdominal massage to see if they're better. So if I could just raise your t-shirt a bit, because I don't want to get it oily. Of just around there. If you could tuck that tissue into your waistband for me, just to stop the oil onto your clothes. Um, I've got the heated couch on. Is that okay yeah, or is it too perfect. hot? No, no? just okay. not. Oh, good. Just nice, thank you. Good, good. 
Right, um, because of kinesiology, I'm just going to bring out a few oils that I know help digestively. Okay. Um, and lower back. I'm going to sort of treat both symptoms with the same oils. Um, and we're going to check a range of oils to see which one your body wants. Thank you. Mmm, black pepper is shouting loud to me because mm. that treats both. Mm. Do you like pepper? I do like pepper. Mmm. Okay, I've got quite a few oils here. So, with this hand, can you hold that in place? Sorry if it's cold. Yeah, it, yeah, and then give me that little finger and thumb again. I'm going to try and pull and hold. No, we don't want black pepper. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't call it. That one again and hold. No, we don't want whole leaf. It's all right. We've got we've got fifty to get through. <laughs> and hold. Ooh. Oh, okay. at the mention of 50, your body went, can we just say yes? <laughs> so coriander is a goer. Okay. That one, if you could support that in place and hold. No, we don't want peppermint. And hold. No, we don't want nutmeg. And hold. Ooh, we don't want mandarin. Well, we've got one. We've got one. And hold. <laughs> okay. And hold. Mm. Last one. And hold. No. Okay. Mm. So, it's coriander for you today. We don't want peppermint, cinnamon, Black mm, pepper, isn't it? whole leaf, nutmeg. <laughs> it's very picky. It, yeah, but that, fair enough. Mm. Uh, ginger, nor Roman chamomile. Surprised at Roman chamomile because that's highly uh, anti-inflammatory. Um, but anyway, we're going to put a good quantity of coriander in here because it's just the one. Okay. There may well be other oils, of course, but. You know, there's only so much time your body wants to be testing oils. So I've warmed up the oil, but not my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine that a back, like the way you've described it when you first came in, might need more than one tri treatment. I would have said so, yes. Mm. So we'll have to see how, what your tests say at the end of uh, the treatment. So, just, oh, is that sore? Do you want to bend your knees? Would that be more comfortable for you? Maybe, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Do you want a cushion under your knees or are you happy self-supporting? Yeah, are you sure? Fine, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, the lovely thing about this particular technique, it's called Anmofu, it's a... Chinese deep abdominal massage is that there are a series of techniques we use and we do them all and then we do them all again and then we do them all again so it's repeated three times and I'm obviously on the first time right now but you will notice that each repetition gets not only less and less painful, sore and uncomfortable, but more and more relaxing, soft and doing its job. It will just, the stomach will just feel easier and easier each time. I think a certain amount of that is to do with knowing what's happened once and then the second time the body knows what's coming. Expecting. So, 
With the Crohn's, is there anything that you notice that you need to avoid or have more of? Uh, anything uh, inflammatory, so uh, alcohol particularly, I have to I stay away from there. Uh, although you know, I may have you know, some small amounts at the weekend, maybe I'll have a, sort of a small bottle of beer maybe, but I try and stay away from that. Um, it generally sort of that's what will cause a flare up more than anything yeah um and then just eat in smaller quantities so smaller meals sort of more often okay i probably should have mentioned that i have a small hiatus hernia as well do you is that because of the crowns or not uh it would die they were diagnosed both at the same time so um so it's possibility, but I, I don't know. Mm. Where is it? So just here. Oh, okay. Yeah, just right. a small hiatus one, so it was where uh, the, it's popped above the diaphragm. Right. Does that affect your breathing? Uh, Being able to take bigger breaths? Potentially, I would say, yes, yeah. Um, and again, it's something I have to watch with, the, you know, the volume of the food that I eat, because sometimes I can find that I... It sit it will sit here. Yeah. And then it yeah. It slowly will come down. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Do you know if it's worsened over the years? Do you know? Because how? When was it diagnosed? How long ago? It was diagnosed shortly after we moved into, we moved into our current property in September, of twenty eighteen. And we went away to see some friends in Spain for a weekend for my birthday in the October. And uh, while we were away, we started drinking and we ate quite a lot. We were in and out of different restaurants and bits of things, just sort of normal stuff you would do while you're away on holiday and different foods and things like that. Um, then on the the Sunday morning when we were due to go, we were due to leave and go back to the airport. Um, got a very sort of strange feeling in my chest. It was almost, it was very tight. Um, it almost was like I was going to be sick, but couldn't. So I was trying to, you know, produce vomiting and, and, and you know, bring it to come on, and it didn't. Um, and that then led into um, some acid reflux, and been suffering with a reasonable amount of acid reflux sort of, you know, sort of before then anyway. Um, so anyway, uh, we came out of the hotel, went out somewhere, went and had a coffee just while we were sort of going around the harbour and having a look. Um, and then I just had this sort of just bizarre turn. I was sat opposite Joe on the table and I just felt like I was just going to go, like I was just going to pass out. It was almost like, it didn't feel like I was having a heart attack, there wasn't any sort of tightness in my chest. but. I just felt like I was going to pass out and then my heart rate just went through the roof. I think I probably just went into some sort of panic mode because I literally just felt... I remember, I just remember it quite clearly. I was looking across the table and I thought, this might be the last time I'm looking at Joe because I just felt... Th th it this was, was it. it was an odd feeling. It was just utterly bizarre. Like, well, my energy had gone and it was just... It was very odd. So... Sort of, I told Joe how I felt, and they sort of got me up and got me back to the sort of, the sort of car. But they sort of had to, had like one each side of me. Sort of, we went walked back to the car, and again, sort of, Joe had like a like a Fitbit she had on her wrist, and she put it on my arm, and just the heart rate was just going here, there, and everywhere, up and down. And again, I, again, I was probably panicking at that point, just because I just I'd never felt like that before. It was very strange. Um, so yeah, um, managed to get me to the airport. It sort of it sort of subsided a little bit, but I just felt very strange pretty much until we we came to board the flight, and and by the time we got back home, I sort of felt okay again. But again, for the for about a week, two weeks after, I just didn't feel right, and that's just when I went to the doctors and explained about the abdominal pain and the and the different things I was having with acid reflux, etc., and other pain that I was like you said. I was getting pain here and um, while I was at work because it got quite a sedentary job. So when I'm sitting quite a lot of the day, that's where the pain was coming from here. 
um, and sort of well, I've, I've been to and fro. We actually ended up going to A and E because I just Jojo got back from work and I was just bent over with pain in my stomach and again just energy had just gone. I'd been completely fatigued. I was getting some chest pains um, and bits and pieces. We went to A and E and they did. They did like an ECG and like a heart thing and you know, everything, you know, heart was absolutely fine. There was no issues there. Um, and then it was sort of to and fro from the GP. Some of the GPs just sort of brushed it off as a, just a complete muscular issue. And I just kept on going back until there was a, um, I think they called her an advanced nurse. And she did like a, like a proper, she, she was the first person that got me on the table and did an examination of my stomach and was pressing and goes, you know, there's getting pain here and here and here. And she said, this just isn't right. So, you know, she just fast tracked me down the, down the bowel route. And, um, yeah, they did, um, endosco endoscopy and colonoscopy. So the endo on endoscopy was first and that fine found the small hiatus hernia. And then the, uh, the colonoscopy found some, just in the small of the bowel, it only seems to affect the small bowel, the ilium, is it? I think something like that, if that's called. So there was some uh, inflammation there and there was some ulceration. There was one polyp which they removed. Um, and so then I've just gone on to um, some immunosuppressants to sort of treat it. So generally he seems to keep a lid on it, but again, what things like there are triggers, like I say, alcohol and then just overeating just tends to to bring it on really so so just kind of you know, I don't really drink a lot anymore because of it and then you know it's only when I just sort of get a little bit lazy and don't think about it and have a bigger meal or I just you know just fancy throwing caution to the wind and just think oh it'll be fine and then no it's not <laughs> so yeah Okay, you've been through the mill, haven't you? Mm. And it, it's scary, isn't it? When you don't I mean, know what it is. I mean, yeah. even when you found out what it is, it's like, okay, so how's that going to affect my life? Yeah. Mm. So you've had to adapt. So it was only five years ago. Yeah, it's only very recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we can develop Crohn's then, can't we? You weren't born with it. <sighs> I think the funny thing is, is once I was diagnosed with it, there are things that I could look back on and go, okay, yeah, I have had, is had issues with that. Certainly when I was, was much younger and things like that, um, I definitely had a, a bowel issue when I was probably between um, six and ten years old where I would get a very, I'd get constipated all the time. Right. So to the point where it almost got quite backed up to the point then that it was then difficult to then pass. Yeah. Um, Gosh, you poor thing. And then just general fatigue and bits and pieces because obviously yeah. your aliens, I was from what they told me, it's, that's the, the part of your bowel responsible for receiving your vitamins and yeah. all the minerals that you get from your food. So again, yeah. you know, perhaps it kind of explained, you know, I've never, Never been great athletically and things like that. So right, ah, oh, so, so it might have been there longer. Mm, yeah, and it's just been, it's just sat there. Not, I wouldn't say dormant, but until it's got to a point where you know the the symptoms are just have just come to the surface more. And oh, this feels a lot better. Does it feel better to you mm, now? Yeah. Compared to when I started. Yes. Yeah. Can you give me three deep breaths, please? Well done. Mm. So there's a valve on that side as well that mm -hmm. you said earlier was sore, okay. but not as sore as this side. That side always been the worst. Mm. Okay, another three deep breaths.
when it's talking. Mm. Yeah, it's better than it was. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to dry off the oil. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to retest a few parts. Are you all right? Yeah. So, can you, yeah, flat hand, uh, no, that, actually the flat hand passed, it was ends of fingers here, mm -hmm. and back to the little finger and thumb, and hold, ah, okay, that's still opening, I need to do something more there, fingers into there, and hold, yay, mm -hmm. anxiety point, so that's a good one to pass, ends of fingers again here, yeah and hold oh really strong stomach mm. good that finger into the rib this um so like that that's it so more this way that's it yeah perfect okay. now this is the place that really was sore earlier and hold wow that couldn't be stronger no and how does it feel there but it's not as painful as it was before. So it still a quite, bit. There's, there's something there, but it's not how it felt before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's check the Houston valve. So two fingers deep into there. This one again and hold. Okay. Opening a little bit and then two fingers deep into there and hold. Yay. Strong, strong Ren. Mm -hmm. You can release that hand just down to the couch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay and back to this and hold oh kidneys mm. and hold adrenals mm. lovely okay you can turn over okay you can relax so this is the tweener chinese massage just want to have a little feel of your back Yeah, there's some tightness in the muscle here. Mm -hmm. So this is the erector spinae muscle that wraps around the spine each side, okay. protecting the vertebrae themselves. They feel in spasm. So this is really, it's a strong muscle, but it's yeah. too tight at the moment. So I'm trying to bring in some movement and softness, get the spine okay. waving rather than rolling like an iron bar. Is what I'm doing sore or nice? Uh, a bit sore, of both. Sore at the bottom end. Okay. So these vertebrae here, because of a little bit of roundedness, yeah. they've receded into your back okay. and very difficult for me to pick them up and push them. I can uh. just about get to them. But what should happen is they should be more obvious than that, okay. but they're completely covered uh. um, each side with um, muscle and tissue that that is, if you like, protecting them. But um, okay. Yeah, there, there needs to be um, sort of better posture there, but the tween R will help that. Okay. 
So I can imagine what will happen over the next couple of treatments is we'll check your stomach early on and yeah. if it's still shouting then I'll need I'll still need to treat it and obviously still work on your back a bit okay. but I'm hoping at some point your stomach will say no I'm fine now you can look at something else you can spend time somewhere else okay. so I might end up maybe doing some cupping on your back or um, some other techniques that are within the TCM traditional Chinese medicine realm okay. to um, get some softness and movement in your back. You're right. And relax the leg, relax, relax, lovely, good. So I'm using the leg as a lever actually to work on the pelvis, just realigning okay. the pelvis so it's helping the lower back. Relax your leg, I've got you, I've got you, nice and soft and loose, lovely, let go. Lovely, good, okay. Let me take the weight. I've got you, I've got you, floppy doll, just nice and loose. Lovely, just resetting the pelvis. Let them go all the way down.
nice and slowly if you want to turn over onto your back, nice and gentle. You can go down, but you could afford to go down another inch, I think. Yeah? Are you on? Yeah. You, yeah? yeah. Lovely. That hurting the lower back when I do that? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Stretching out muscles that don't want to stretch. <laughs> <laughs> they will. Yeah, okay. Would, can I put a uh, bolster under your knees? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. coming after you today. No. Jackie bless her. Yeah. She's had one treatment and uh, sent me a lovely message saying how much better she felt. Oh, excellent. Yeah, she has really been struggling. Yeah. Relax, relax, relax. Let go, let go. I know it feels odd. Someone's got <laughs> fingers in you. It feels like it's in your head, but it's, it's in your neck. I know, I know. Another sore area, I found it. Mm. Let go, let go. Heavy, heavy. That's it, that's it. Lovely. Remember to breathe. It. heavier the better the less resistance the less pain good they're springing <laughs> Okay, heavy head, I've got, that's it, lovely. So the head, on average, weighs 10 pounds. Okay. That's a lot. And when we tilt our heads forward, i.e. a phone, or looking at our feet when we're walking, that's another 10 pounds, Ooh, one inch. Okay. When we tilt it another inch, that's another 10, 10 pounds. So, imagine tilting it a, a lot forwards, you know, when we're working or on a phone or looking down at a screen, yeah. a laptop or whatever, it, the neck has to cope with that extra weight on top of the, the, the natural weight of, of the head. Yeah. So, if you can possibly, when you're looking at phone or whatever else you're doing in life that you're looking down, um, look in front of you in, and with your eyes tilted down rather than tilting your whole head yeah, down. Yeah. I know, you know, you've been doing this for X number of years and now it's going to be the right ordeal to have to change it's it. It's just practice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but if you can try and think, I do not want a bad neck. I do not want a humped, a humped upper back. I do not want a sore lower back. That might make you think, right, okay, look, Head, head above my neck, not in front of my neck, you know, and eyes looking down, if possible. Okay. Yeah. A good way to do it on the phone is put your elbow on your front ribs when you're holding your phone and put your phone more in front of your face and a little bit down rather than 
by your body. Bits of all this side. Mm. Okay, let go, let go. That's it, lovely. So this is about C3. Um, it's not too bad. I've seen far worse than this. So, okay. yeah, I think the lower back is the shouting the loudest. Okay, heavy, heavy. And let go, let go. Heavy, 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 heavy. Yes, brilliant. Brilliant. Let go. Let it tilt back all the way back into the... Yes. Not pushing it back, just letting the muscle go. That's it. Soft muscles. Lovely. And then elongating the neck from the back. Obviously there's some resistance. This is your first time having mm. a core treatment, so there's going to be quite a lot of tightness. Okay. Well done. You're doing so well. Mm. So I'm just stretching the length of the mm. shoulder down from the neck. That feels quite tight in there. Mm -hmm. Are you right-handed? Yes. Yeah, so it could be that there. It's quite tight from being right-handed. There we are. Okay. Okay, so can you have a deep breathe and a stretch? Your arms up over your head, whole body stretch. Ooh, hopefully that feels okay in the back. And coming back into the room, opening your eyes when you're ready to. So we're just gonna retest a couple of things that um, we haven't retested that were previously okay. failing. So gallbladder and both ipses. So can you put uh, not that one, uh -huh. ends of fingers, so like that, um, on the skin here. Oh, sorry, with that hand, because <laughs> so I need this hand. Test. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, got it, and hold. <laughs> right, I was really pulling in order to really test it. Okay. I'm telling your subconscious, I'm telling you, telling the viewers, telling me, but um, it opened a fractional amount. We will test that again next time. But it is so, it just popped open yes. both times last okay. time. So, yeah, you can release that and this hand. Can I have a nice straight leg, straight arm up into the air? I'm going to push, you're going to hold up and hold. Okay, sinking a tiny bit, it's just a little bit squadgy. And hold. Oh, that one definitely is. Okay. Mm. That you can relax. So that tells me it's your lower back. Okay, I think we've made a lot of improvement with your tummy. Yes. I really want to get to grips with your lower back next time. But if next time your tummy says, no, it's still me, then I need to also treat that. But you'll find because there's less um, explanations with a second treatment that I'll be able to get on with more therapy yes, yeah, yeah. next time. Okay. Brilliant. You can get up when you're ready, but nice and easy because that was quite a deep treatment. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. How's your back? It feels, yeah, yeah some relief already. Oh, good. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it because I'm expecting to have to compensate yeah. in the legs, in my legs or something like that before, but no. Good. And this, you know, it's still... I can still feel a twinge, there's yeah. still something there, but yeah. Okay, so 0 to 10, 10 being the worst pain, when you first arrived, what number was it? Oh, I'll probably put it about an 8, so... And what is it now? Probably 6 towards a 5. Okay, okay, I'll settle for that. 
So thank you very much for coming. No, thank you. <laughs>